so as you all know i am not married yet and um you know i've been very interested in this area of marriage because i do believe i'm gonna get married someday to someone and i'm going to be someone's wife and um i really want to be intentional about that space i don't want to jump into something just because people are getting married it's a desire of my heart and i think you've had me share this i was hoping by the time i was getting to 30 i'd be married and having children but clearly <laughs> You know, many other plans in a in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's will that eventually prevails. So I've really been um, thinking about this area of marriage. And one thing I know is um, that it takes a lot of intentionality for someone to actually submit to someone and allow that person to be a leader in their life. And I'm saying this understanding that as Christ is the head of the church, as a woman, I'll have to submit to my husband. But I always say this, do not submit to foolishness. You get what I'm saying? And I'll say this, um, I believe the Lord has someone for each and every one of us who desires to get married. Of course, not everyone desires to get married and not everyone could care about anything to do with marriage. But at the end of the day, I do believe if it's a desire of yours and you give it to God, God is going to align you and to bring the person he has created specifically for you. Someone who understands you, someone who's called into what you've been called into, not in terms of doing the same thing, but someone will have a desire to support the vision God has given you. Someone will have a desire to um, help you as you're pursuing your purpose. And I'm not just saying that someone who's going to help you, but you're also going to be very significant in helping them. Because as women, we are called to be helpers to our husbands. And um, I, was, I, I was, I you know, I did a question on, um, I did a question on social media, on my Facebook and Instagram. And I was asking, you know, for married people to give advice to those who are yet to get into marriage. And it's so unfortunate that that, that that was so much negativity. But then again, there was so much positivity. But what I realized is most people are in survival mode. It's more like, you know, some people are talking about um, in marriage, you have to play stupid, you have to play dumb so that everything flows. And I'm not for that. I'm like, you have something to say, state it out say it out don't play stupid so that you can have peace in the relationship like i don't know whether you get what i'm saying i think it's very sad you're married to someone but you have to play dumb for there to be peace meaning if there are issues you don't address them meaning you don't hold someone accountable meaning you don't deal with the real issues because you have to play dumb for the sake of peace i hope you get what i'm saying but aside from that um, i was looking at other comments and more of um you know, people, people are just interesting. People are just interesting. And I didn't want to go, like, through the comments today. But, you know, I, I saw people saying marriage is a beautiful thing, you know. It has its ups and downs. And, um, you know, sometimes, some, sometimes people marry right. Sometimes people marry wrong. It all depends. And then it depends also with, you know, what are your intentions of getting into marriage. Personally, I desire marriage. And I just, I just don't want to get married and just have the title wife. That does not excite me. It's not just about the title or, you know, just having someone to say, oh, that is my husband. We have so many meaningless marriages. We have so many abusive marriages, dysfunctional marriages. We have so many fake marriages, social media marriages. Like you can name but a few. And I'm saying this because I personally want to get married and I want to be in a purposeful marriage and I want to to actually thrive in the marriage. I don't want to just be surviving in the marriage. I don't believe God is calling us into marriages to get frustrated into marriages to just survive and to have the bare minimum i think there's wholeness and there's a level of blessing you get when you get into marriage especially if you get into marriage with the right person at the right time with the right intentions and this doesn't come from only one person it has to be both ways and um one of, one of the things i saw someone talking about um you know sometimes you'd want to marry someone but they are not ready to get married there's also that so sometimes you can get married to someone who was never prepared to get married into that season but since you thought this is the person you want to marry you did not want to have any part of that the other thing is i saw people talking about you know some of the red flags you get to see prior to you getting married and as i was looking through and sieving through the comments i, I realized some people have made a mistake of getting married to people who they knew they were not compatible, but because of the small benefits and gains they could have, that's why they chose to say yes. But then again, as I always say, sometimes it's like you're sitting on a, you know, on a time bomb. And the moment the car bomb goes off, that's it. Everything comes crumbling down. And uh, this was the question because I've met, um, I've heard of testimonies and, um, you know, not even testimonies, more of like stories. People are married for over 20 years. 
30 years, 10 years, 5 years. And uh, all of a sudden, one day, the whole thing just capish done. It was no longer, it's no longer there. And my question has always been like, all of us are susceptible to this. And I believe, as I always say, when you know better, you do better. So you don't get into marriage blindly without dealing with what needs to be dealt with earlier on in the relationship. And in my head, I want to be so intentional that I know the trigger points. I know what could possibly happen. I know where we can get hit and we are prepared to, to, to deal with it. But then it cannot only come from one person. It has to come from both parties. And um, I'll say this. Um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, there has to be a level of intentionality when it comes to this thing called marriage. It has to be both ways. I saw someone saying, you know, it has to be uh, make sure you marry someone who loves you more than you love them. And I think that is foolishness. You both have to give 100% in the relationship. There's nothing like I marry someone who loves me more because that means I'll be safe. As in already the motive of getting into this relationship or marriage is wrong. So you expect that thing to stand Mm -hmm. it will not because the motives are wrong. And I say this, a lot of times we think things we say by mouth mean a lot than the things that we actually believe in our hearts. And if your whole intention was just to get a title, you'll get the title, but at what cost? So some of us who are not married, we are not desiring titles of, you know, I'm someone's wife. <laughs> yes, I'm married. That does not excite me. I want to be in a thriving, functioning marriage, a wholesome marriage a marriage I'll be proud of. I don't want to be faking it out here that, you know, my marriage is perfect. Come on, we've seen all of these things online. But anywho, I do believe um, if there is no intentionality, the marriage is not going to stand the test of time. There has to be willingness from both parties to work out their differences, to deal with the hard things of the relationship, to, to have the hard conversations earlier on and prior to even getting into that space of marriage. And I've come to realize a lot of people do not want to go there. We like surfacing around. We like excelling around conversations. We like talking about the mediocre things, the small things which don't really, like they matter to an extent, but like let's say come at 20%. But the things which can actually bring the downfall of your possible marriage, they're the things people don't like addressing. So we ignore these things until it gets to a place where ignoring is not a choice and you're no longer able to avoid uh, to avoid that kind of thing you've been avoiding. So it gets to a place where everyone has had enough and uh, no one wants to do anything about it. Not because you did not know there was a possibility that this could be a problem, but because you chose to ignore it, thinking it is going to go away, brushing things under the carpet. But all said, uh, I believe in marriages. I believe marriages work. I believe love is a beautiful thing and there are good people out there. There are good men, there are good women out there, men with pure intentions, men with good hearts, men and women who are just amazing people. And, you know, life does happen. But my prayer is that we may end up making um, discerning choices. We may end up using wisdom as we're getting into this space so that we can have more thriving marriages and not fake marriages and social media marriages, nice pictures and all of that. But beneath, there's just so much rot. So, um, that's all I can say. Anyway, we'll keep on having this conversation.